licenses. This presentation nor the content included therein is really meant to serve as legal advice. If you need legal advice on a particular scenario at your particular institution, I would advise you to reach out to general counsel and discuss it with them. So this is really just meant to be a general overview. So by the end of this session, what I hope is that we'll have a good conversation about the relationship between copyright and Creative Commons, um, how to decipher these licenses because they're very confusing, and what this tells you about how you can use them in the classroom. I'll also show you a few resources uh, for locating Creative Commons license material, some of which you may already be familiar with. So just a little bit about me before we get started. Um, again, my name is Danielle Applebaum, and I am a senior assistant librarian at Farmingdale State College, where I'm also the scholarly communication librarian. Uh, primarily, I help faculty navigating copyright, fair use, open licensing, and open access publishing. And to do that, I went and got my Creative Commons certification in October of 2018. So if anybody would like to know uh, about the Creative Commons certification experience, I would be happy to answer questions at the end, or you can feel free to email me at a later date if you have questions. Um, my email will be available in the slide deck, which I've popped into the chat. Um, I'll pop that in again before uh, the end of the session, just in case you didn't get that link. So before we can have a conversation about Creative Commons, we need to have a conversation about copyright. And so first, what does copyright protect? Um, I have to apologize, I have a very wordy slide for you. I know I'm violating the cardinal rule of PowerPoint, um, but it's been my experience that when I'm talking about copyright uh, with faculty and colleagues, it just works best to be able to look at the actual verbiage. So what's copyrighted by, uh, excuse me, what's protected by copyright are any works of authorship that are fixed in a tangible form. Um, so basically, it must be work that's in a textual format, visual format, um, audio format. It includes literary works, musical works, motion pictures, recordings, even architectural works. So once that work is fixed in a tangible medium, the copyright holder has several exclusive rights, meaning that only the copyright holder has the right to carry out these activities. So anyone other than a copyright holder who wants to be able to carry out one of these activities has to ask for and obtain permission from the copyright holder. So this includes reproducing the work or making copies of it. In paper format, we might think of that as making a photocopy, but it's important to remember that you're reproducing something in the digital world once you have made a copy, downloaded it, let's say to your hard drive or to your desktop. This also includes preparing derivative works. So this means that if you write a book, you need to give permission for somebody else to turn it into a play. Or if somebody wants to adapt your work into say a workbook, they'll need permission for that as well. So without the copyright holder's permission, you also can't distribute copies of the work. And again, we tend to think of distributing the work in terms of, okay, I make a paper photocopy and I hand it out in class, or I distribute it during a meeting. But it's also important to keep in mind, especially in distance learning settings and in the learning management system, that you are distributing something when you post it to the course, or you're distributing it when you post it to your site. You don't necessarily need to be giving multiple people copies of it just by virtue of putting it in the course or putting it on the site, you are distributing it. So finally, if it's a visual work or a work that's able to be staged, you cannot display the work, perform the work in public or via digital transmission without the copyright holder's permission. So again, these are the exclusive rights that are given to the copyright holder once that work of authorship is fixed in a tangible medium. And again, this comes directly from Title 17 copyright law. So now Creative Commons, what's that? So Creative Commons is a legally enforceable mechanism for saying, hey, I know that as the copyright holder, I'm entitled to these exclusive rights, but I'm willing to let you use my work in a certain way if you meet certain conditions. 
So just a brief history of the commons. So there's a really interesting history to Creative Commons, and what I'm gonna to relay to you is what I've learned in my Creative Commons uh, certificate course. So essentially, Creative Commons grew out of the Sonny Bono Copyright Term Extension Act, which was enacted in 1998. What it did was it extended the term of copyright for every work in the United States, even those that were already published, for an additional 20 years. So the copyright term equaled the life of the creator plus 70 years. And it's interesting that this happened just at the time um, that Steamboat Willie, which was the uh, precursor to Mickey Mouse, would have fallen into the public domain. So that's why this law is also sometimes known as the Mickey Mouse Protection Act. So Lawrence Essig, a Stanford law professor, as well as Eric Eldred, a web publisher, decided to challenge the constitutionality of the act. And the case, which was known as Eldred versus Ashcroft, went all the way to the Supreme Court, um, but unfortunately, they lost. So out of that grew the Creative Commons in 2002. And these licenses that resulted from this project were a set of free public licenses that allowed creators to keep their copyright while sharing their works on more flexible terms than the default all rights reserved. Again, you have to remember that copyright is automatic whether you want it or not. It's, it's conferred the minute you fix um, <clears throat> a work in tangible form. And while some people do want to reserve all their rights, there are many who want to share their work with the public more freely. So the idea behind Creative Commons licensing was that this would be an easy way for creators who wanted to retain their copyright but share their works in a way that was a little bit more free. So now as of 2017, there's over a hundred, uh, there's over one point, there's 1.4 billion works that are licensed under Creative Commons. So now, com Creative Commons and copyright. I can't emphasize this enough, and that is that it's really important to remember that as we go into an overview of Creative Commons licenses, um, you have to remember that copyright and Creative Commons work hand in hand. It's a very common myth that when you openly license a work, you have to waive your copyright. Um, this is just not true. Creative Commons, again, it's simply a mechanism for communicating to users that if their use meets the criteria specified by the license, they do not have to request permission from the copyright holder for that use. If their intended use doesn't meet those requirements, then they need to request permission from the copyright holder for that use. So each license is comprised of conditions that indicate to users what they can or cannot do with an openly licensed work. So what we're gonna do is go over the individual conditions and then we'll take a look at the six licenses which are comprised of one or more of these conditions. So the first condition is attribution. All Creative Commons licenses require that others who use the material in any way must give credit um, in the way that the author re requires, but not in a way that suggests that the author endorses them or their use. So if they want to use a work without giving credit for endorsement purposes, they have to get permission from the creator. The second condition is the share alike condition. This condition allows authors to give permission for others to copy, distribute, display, perform, and modify work as long as they distribute any modified work on the same terms. If they want to distribute modified works under different terms, they have to get the permission of the creator. The third condition is the non-commercial condition. So this allows a creator to give permission to others to copy, to distribute, to display, to perform, and unless they've chosen the no derivatives condition, to modify and use that work for any purpose other than commercial purposes. If they wanna use it for non-commercial uh, purposes, they must uh, obtain permission. And finally, the fourth condition is the no derivatives condition. So this condition allows you to give permission to others to copy, distribute, display, and perform only original copies of the work. If others want to modify the work, they have to get permission from the creator. So now putting it all together in a license. So the Creative Commons 
attribution license, also known as CCBY, is the least restrictive of all the open licenses. It requires only that you cite the original creation. If you're familiar with David Wiley's five R's of OER, this is a license that enables each of those five R's. So I'll go over them and we'll use this as a framework um, throughout the rest of the license explanation. So first, you can retain the item. It means that you can make, own, and control copies of the content. So you can download, duplicate, store, and manage an item in a learning management system or in a course wiki. Second, you can reuse the item, meaning you can use the content in a wide range of ways. So you could distribute it in class as a paper handout, share it in a study group, use it for tutoring, share it in your learning management system, and so on. Third, you can revise the item, meaning that you can adapt, adjust, modify, or alter the content. So, this means that you could translate the content into another language. Um, you could add captioning to a video or an image, uh, or change the examples used in a test bank. Fourth, you can remix the item, meaning you can combine the original uh, or revised content with other materials to create something new. So think of a mashup or maybe a multimedia presentation. Fifth, you can redistribute the item, meaning you can share copies of the original content, your revisions, or your remixes with others. So again, one example might be uh, a course pack. The CCBY essay, or the Attribution Share Alike license, allows you to reuse, retain, redistribute, remix, and revise the material for commercial or non-commercial purposes. However, you must credit the original work and you must license any modified versions of the work under the same or a compatible license. So what does this mean in practice? So let's say that you find an OER textbook and you want to use a chapter for one of your units, but you want to delete a few subsections, add a new subsection to cover a topic that wasn't included in the original version, and you want to crop and edit some of the existing photos used in that chapter. The CCBYSA, or again, the Attribution Share Alike license, gives you permission to do all of that, so long as you license the modified version of the chapter under the same terms when you share it in your course or you share it on the web. So essentially, a share alike license prevents someone from modifying and distributing a work under more restrictive licenses. The next license is the CCBYNC, or the Attribution Non-Commercial License. So this license allows you to reuse, retain, redistribute, remix, and revise the material. However, you must credit the original work and your use of the material must be non-commercial in nature. So again, what does this look like in practice? So there's two scenarios we could use to explore this license. So let's say that you teach a college music course and you teach lessons privately as a side gig. You're browsing the web and you discover a great handout that helps students work through the circle of fifths and it has a CCBYNC license. If you want to alter that handout, maybe you want to change the layout, make copies and distribute that handout to your students at your non-for-profit institution of higher education, you're absolutely good to go. However, if you want to make, um, if you want to take that item and modify it and distribute it as part of your curriculum for your private lessons that you teach as part of your side business, that would require permission from the creator because that would be considered a commercial use. The next license is the CCBYNC essay or the Attribution Non-Commercial Share Alike license. So with this license, um, you can, of course, again, reuse, retain, redistribute, remix, and revise the material. However, you must give credit to the original work, your use of the material must be non-commercial in nature, and any modified versions of the work must be licensed under the same terms. 
So again, we'll go over what this might look like in practice. So let's say you're trying to teach your students how to read a scholarly article. And let's say you find an article that's licensed under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial share alike license. Great. This means that you can mark up and annotate the article to your heart's desire without asking permission to make these modifications and share the item as long as your purpose is non-commercial in nature and you apply the same licensing terms to the annotated article when you share it with your students or again, if you share it out on the web. The next license is the CC BYND, also known as the Attribution No Derivatives License. So unlike the previous license we've covered, you'll notice that we have lost some of the R's. So the Attribution Non-Derivative License allows you to reuse, retain, and redistribute material for commercial or non-commercial purposes, so long as you credit the original work and you share the material in its original form. Again, it does not allow you to remix, revise, or modify the material and share it back out. So let's go back to the uh, scenario that we considered earlier. So again, hypothetically, let's say that you teach a music course and you're giving music lessons as a side gig as well. If that great handout on the circle of fifths had a CC BYND license attached to it, you could make copies and distribute it to the students in both your college course and your private lessons, as long as you didn't modify the handout and you provided cre credit to the original creator. The final and the most restrictive of the Creative Commons licenses is the CC, BY, NC, ND license, also known as the Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivative License. So again, we've lost some of those R's. We can still reuse, retain, and re redistribute this item, but only for non-commercial purposes and only in its original form. Again, the material cannot be revised or remixed without the permission of the creator or copyright holder. So one more time, let's return to that earlier scenario with the music lessons. So again, let's say you teach a college music course and you give music lessons as a side gig. If that great handout on the circle of fifths had a CC, BY, NC, and D license attached to it, you can make copies and distribute it as is only to the students in your college course. If you wanted to distribute it to the students to whom you were giving private lessons, you'd have to ask the copyright holder for permission. And if you wanted to modify that handout, you'd also have to ask for permission. So public domain isn't something that's unique to Creative Commons, but it is worth mentioning as it does let you know that you're dealing with an item for which the copyright has either expired or for which the copyright holder has waived their rights to copyright. So works in the public domain can be reused, retained, redistributed, remixed, and revised without any restrictions. Attribution isn't required, but it's strongly recommended. So we talked a little bit about modifying and adapting and remixing works. So we wanna talk about license compatibility. When you're adapting or remixing multiple works, you need to be aware of which licenses are compatible and which are not. So for instance, if you wanted to remix a work in the public domain with a work that has a CCBY license, you can do that because none of the conditions of either license preclude you from mixing these. However, if you wanted to remix an item with a CC, BY, NC license and a CC, BY, SA license, you wouldn't be able to do this. They're not compatible because BY, SA allows for adaptation for commercial purposes and BY, NC does not. So these would not be compatible. That said, you can still create collections. So for instance, a, a collection of art and essays, a course pack with items which have incompatible licenses as long as you're not adapting and remixing the works together. So in Creative Commons training, we were provided with a really helpful metaphor for thinking about the difference between the two. So an adaptation, 
is like a smoothie. All the ingredients are mixed together in such a way as you can't tell where one ingredient starts and one ingredient ends. Plus, you've completely transformed all of these salads into liquid form. A collection, on the other hand, is like a TV dinner. Multiple items are making up the meal, but they're discrete and they don't interact, and one doesn't change the other. So now I'm gonna actually ask you to do a little bit of work with these scenarios. I thought it would be helpful if you had a chance to think about the licenses in terms of real life scenarios that you might encounter. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna present you with a scenario and then I'm gonna give you a minute or two to think about it and what I'd like for you to do is share your response to the scenario in the chat box. So scenario one. You're teaching a bio course, and you found a great photo of a hydra. The image is licensed under a CC BY and D license. That's a Creative Commons attribution, no derivatives license. You want to crop, recolor, and annotate the image for one of your openly licensed slide decks. Can you do this? So I'm going to give you a minute to think about this. I'm going to drop the slide deck back into the chat so that you're able to take a look at this and then I'm gonna give you a minute to respond so I'll pu put that scenario back up Oops. So again, you're teaching a bio course and you found a great photo of a hydra. The image is licensed under a CC BY and D license. You want to crop, recolor, and annotate the image for one of your openly licensed slide decks. Can you do this? All right, so I'm looking at the responses and you guys are absolutely right. So you can't, as long as there's a no derivative, you can't edit or alter that image. You can certainly reuse it for commercial or non-commercial purposes, but you cannot alter it. So folks are doing great. Let's move on to the next scenario. Okay, can you all still see my slides? I, I went out of presenter view, but can you all see them still? Yeah, we can see them. Okay, great. So scenario two, you teach English 101 and you found a great video about generating thesis statements, but it's a little too long. The video is licensed under a CC BY NC SA license. That's an attribution, non-commercial, share-alike license. You want to cut it down and incorporate the clip into another video you're making for your class and license it under a CC BY ND license. That's an attribution non-derivative license. Can you do this? So again, share your thoughts. Okay, great, I'm seeing all the answers coming in and everybody is absolutely right. You can't do it because if the original was licensed under a chair-like license, the resulting modified work has to be licensed under the same terms. So we couldn't put a no derivatives license on it because it's not compatible with the license of the original video that we're remixing or adapting. So great job, everyone. All right, the final scenario. 
you're teaching a US history course. You want to upload the textbook, which is licensed under a CC BY license. That's a Creative Commons attribution license. Um, you want to upload it directly to the learning management system. You also have a paid tutoring gig on the side. You want to provide the student with printed copies of relevant chapters for your private sessions. Can you do this? So what do you, what do y'all think? Can we do one of those? Can we do both of those? Okay, awesome responses. Yes, we can actually do both because CCBY, the attribution license, says that you can basically do anything. You can remix, you can revise, you can redistribute, um, as long as you give credit to the creator. You can do this for commercial purposes, you can do this for non-commercial purposes. So you can actually do both with this item because it is licensed with a CCBY license. But if it had an NC, you could not. If you had, print. if it had an NC, you could only use it for the first uh, part of that scenario. So you could use it in your course, but you couldn't use it in your private sessions if it was CCBY NC. So can, absolutely correct. What if? And I know everyone else probably has questions like this, but you know I'm the host, so I can ask them first. <laughs> uh, that's good to be king. Uh, you know, uh, what if? you in your tutoring session you pointed students to the link where that source originated that is a great question um you could definitely say hey go check out this resource because you're not making a copy and distributing it you're providing a link it's like giving directions to someone you're not taking them to it you're telling them how to get there. So it's not the same as making a copy and distributing it. And in fact, when we deal with these situations um, with faculty who want to upload articles to, let's say, the learning management, what we recommend automatically is link to it. If it's in the database, link to it. If it's uh, available online, link to it. Um, linking helps to mitigate that liability because you're not making a copy and you're not distributing it. You're simply providing a link. And that would be the same if, for example, like I had a personal website to, you know, as part of my consulting business or my tutoring business and on my website, I said, Oh, these are links to resources that have CC by NC or CC and NC licenses that that would be okay. Yeah, if you said, hey, these are things you might want to check out, mm -hmm. you can always tell people here, this is a link to something you might want to look at, but you can't make a copy and distribute that item. And again, taking, let's say, let's say it's a handout that's available online and it has a CCBY NC license and you have a consulting site and you want to display this material, you can't download it and upload it. Because what you've done is you have retained and redistributed it. What you want to do, if you want to direct somebody to a certain resource, put a link to it. That's, that's best practice. Any other questions, Chris? No. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. No problem. Anytime. All right. Uh, I think this is a good point to just pause and does anybody have any questions so far about the licenses? Because what I want to do next is I want to get into some of the resources where you can go and search by license for these materials. But before we do that, I'd like to give anybody an opportunity if you have a question about any of the licenses or um, you know, hypothetical situation, please throw it in the chat box. So yeah, you could all put your questions in the chat box or you could click a little, the little green button in the participants list and click yes. And I think that will, and we can give you the mic if you want the mic. All right, going once, going twice. 
I can't believe All right. <laughs> All right. All right. We'll continue. There'll be plenty of time to ask questions afterwards as well. So don't worry. You'll have plenty of time. So now finding openly licensed materials. Um, we're going to be looking at some resources you might already be familiar with and some you might not be familiar with and some you might know but don't know that there is actually a way to search by Creative Commons licenses. So the first is the Creative Commons search engine. This is a great, great place to start if you are looking for images because what you can do is just type in your keyword and then you can designate um, the type of item you want to use by the purpose. So if you want to use it for commercial purposes, you can just click the box and it will limit it to all the items that are licensed for commercial reuse. Uh, there's also a checkbox for modification or adapting. So if you plan on altering the item and you click that checkbox, it will again return all of the items that are licensed that allow you to modify or adapt that item. And they do have additional collections. You can search by collection too, that's right at the top. Um, but again, easy to search by keyword for images. YouTube also has a Creative Commons search feature. So the way that you would utilize this feature is you would conduct a regular search on YouTube. Once you do your search, you're given the filter option. So you would click the filter option. It's, um, it's an abbreviated menu right above your search bar. When you click it, this whole menu appears. Then all you need to do is click the Creative Commons feature limiter, and it will limit it to, again, all items limited, um, excuse me, licensed under Creative Commons licensing. There's also Google Images. Um, the search engine allows you to search by Creative Commons license as well. They don't use the term Creative Commons, but they use the licensing language. So you do your search as normal. You click to Tools. When you click Tools, that submenu will appear. And there is a section called label for use. If you click this drop down menu, you can then designate the types of items based on your intent for those items. So I click labeled for use, meaning I can reuse these. You can label, uh, limit by label um, for non commercial use with modification or without modification. So it does give you quite a few options. There's also OER Commons. Um, it does provide the ability to search by license as well. However, you wanna start off with the advanced search. And I will be providing all these links are at the very end of the presentation. So if you have the slide deck, give the link to everything. So again, your advanced search, when you click that, it's a very, very robust advanced search page. So you have to scroll down all the way to the bottom and when you get there, there's a section called conditions of use. So you can just check off those uh, licenses that are appropriate for how you intend to use that item. So they have the CCBY, but they spell it out as CC attribution, non-commercial, attribution share alike, attribution non-commercial. They give you the option to select all of them. Finally, we have Merlot. So again, might be very familiar with it, but if you go to the advanced material search, again, just like OER, uh, OER Commons, Merlot has an extremely robust advanced search interface. So if you come right over to the license section, it'll let you select um, the type of licensing you want. Once you select Creative Commons, these two additional drop-down menus will appear. So you can set your preference for commercial or non-commercial usage. You can set your preference for derivatives um, as well. So that's really a crash course in Creative Commons. Um, does anybody have any questions? Trying to pull up the chat. Hold yeah, on. there just oh, one. There we go. One came in at the end there. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome, Matthew. I know. I didn't know about Google and YouTube's ability to search for Creative Commons materials until very, very recently. So you're not alone. <laughs> um, well, can you go into if you want your video or document to be Creative Commons? Okay, we're in the dark. Okay, so if you want to make your materials Creative Commons, let me, let me share my screen again. 
what you can do is put a notation at the beginning of the presentation or the video right within the item itself. And again, I'm going to share, hold on one second so you can see this. So if you take a look at the corner of my screen, you see that I've put a CC BY NC SA license right in the corner. And I have a little notation, unless otherwise noted, the content of this presentation is licensed under, and then my licensing terms. So you could do that at the beginning. I think it's a good idea if you're doing a video, do it at the beginning and the end. Um, you don't necessarily have to have that license throughout the entire video. And I would put it in the description. If, you're, if it's something you're uploading to uh, YouTube, I believe YouTube limits their preset Creative Commons licensing to just CCBY attribution. So what you could do to get around that is license it for educational use, but put in the description it's licensed under these terms and put on the video itself it's licensed under these terms. Danielle, uh, Keith Landa has a question. I'd like to see he wants to use his mic. So, and then there's another one. Okay, that. sure. In the chat. Keith, go ahead. Yeah, not so much a question, but a comment. When I'm working with faculty and showing them the uh, the search in YouTube and uh, Google Images for Creative Commons material, oftentimes the stuff you find that you want to use is not. Most of the time, that's because the default licenses when you upload stuff there is not Creative yeah. Commons. Yeah, you do, I, I should mention, you do have to check every item. Right. I would not. I would not solely trust these searches. You should be looking at the actual item once you've once you've decided you want to use something. Make sure you you are sure of what that item is licensed under, because it's true. They do sometimes it brings up things that are not under that license that you've limited to. So you always just to do your due diligence. Right. Want to take a look at it, and that's why I think it's so important that everybody know what these Creative Commons license means um, and what the individual licenses themselves give you permission to do and what you can't do. Because um, what I, in my work with faculty, what I encounter a lot is that um, they don't think of it as the Creative Commons licenses. They think of it as, oh, the Creative Commons license. And right. it's not just one license. It's many different licenses and they all are different in terms of um, what they do and do not allow you to do with those items. But, but what I also suggest to my faculty is that many of these content creators have just taken the default and would possibly be very open to re, uh, re-tagging their materials in, in YouTube or up on uh, in the Google images search um, as Creative Commons if someone brings it to their attention. Yeah. So just because you found something and it's not immediately labeled Creative Commons, um, like it, like a YouTube video, um, there's no harm in contacting the content creator and saying, can you switch this license? Um, as, as I say, many of them have, have probably never even thought about it. Yeah, no, that's very true, a hundred percent. So I would definitely say if you encounter a video or a handout or something, it isn't openly licensed and you want to use it. Yeah, definitely reach out. If you can, if you can find out who the creator is and get in touch with them, that's a great point um, because you're absolutely right. Um, most people who put it online want to share it in the first place and they want other people to use it. So making them aware of the fact that they can openly license it is, it's a great thing to do. Absolutely. Okay, let's see. So just above where you posted the link, there's a that's where the questions start again. Breton, if let's I were to create. See. Okay, if I were to create help documents about using non-open software, can I release it under a CC license? Um, so you mean like, like a document explaining what Creative Commons is, basically? Is, is that what we're talking about? It looks like documents about like, non-open software. Yeah, it's, it's almost like using a non-open software. Can I release it under a CC license? That would depend um, on what else you're incorporating into it. Are you using materials that come from Blackboard, which are likely not openly licensed? Um, are you just giving directions to how to do things? You know, it, it really depends on what you're putting in that document and what those additional items are licensed under, if it's an open license or if it's not an open license. 
I would imagine if it's just text, there's probably nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I wouldn't think so. Um, if you're including, let's say, screenshots of the software you or the, the program, and that's a proprietary product, you may want to get in touch with Blackboard first and tell them what you're doing and ask if that's okay since you're creating the document. Um, or you might want to just put a, no a copyright notice under the image saying copyright Blackboard 2019, uh, not licensed under an open license. And so that would allow you to communicate that your text is openly licensed, but that image of that proprietary product is not openly licensed. So I don't know if that, if that answers the question. Yeah, I would say if you have the ability to get in touch with the, the company that produces that software, ask them. Um, if not, make sure you put notice under that image that that is copyright that particular company. Okay, um, likely varies. Do you see Tonka's question? That was the next um, question. Oh, it's right under. Okay, can you break the no derivative legally in the interest of accessibility video captioning? It's my understanding that you still need permission to adapt, even if you're dealing with copyrighted material. I would say, I would say in that case, depending on what the item is, how much captioning, how you're making it available, I would get in touch with the creator. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't adapt without permission if there wasn't a no derivatives license on it. I just, just for liability. Yeah, it's definitely a huge issue. Um, but like I said, you don't wanna ever make yourself liable or your institution liable. And the, in many cases, if somebody's gone to the lengths to put an open license on something, they'll probably be very responsive when you contact them about maybe just giving you permission without removing that license for your particular use. So I, I would consider just to be on the safe side, if you think your use falls outside of the purview of the license, reach out to the creator of that item if you can find them. Do you see Jill's Am question? I anything? Am I missing any? Okay. Jill. This like, okay. This likely varies by institution, but I'm curious if publishing an OER text would satisfy the publishing requirement in your promotion and tenure matrix. Perhaps as an original work, not a remixed one, have you encountered any faculty trying to do this? Um, this totally, just to be clear, this, this kind of question falls outside of Creative Commons, um, and it, it would be very unique to every institution. Um, my institution, there's no specific provision recognizing the uh, publishing of an OER text um, for tenure and promotion. I, I do believe there is one SUNY institution that has recognized it. Chris, do you know offhand? Is that Binghamton? Hmm. I think it might be, I don't hold me to that. Yeah, I know, I know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah like. I know there's at least one, but at my institution, there's, there's nothing in writing saying it does or does not count. Um, I have had faculty who do want to create texts um, to fill some of the gaps that are in their, their areas with regard to the textbooks. Um, but as far as um, whether it counts for tenure and promotion, totally unique to every institution. I mean, ideally, theoretically, the license doesn't say anything about a quality of a work, whether it has a traditional copyright or a Creative Commons copyright, right? So it's sort of, um, you know, it's, it is always going to be up to yeah. whoever it is that is, you know, assessing the tenure and promotion case of the individual. It, yeah. It's important too to remember that not every institution weighs textbooks as heavily as they weigh, let's say, peer reviewed right. journal articles in right. particular journals. Like it really, it's, it varies by institution. All right. Any more questions looking? Well, oh, you? Yeah, my shared, per, my, I, it'll always be available. Please take it, modify it, use it. You want to use it at your own institution? Go for it. And Danielle, one of the things that you didn't mention, which I've always really thought was cool about Creative Commons licenses, is that once something has a Creative Commons license, it can't be revoked. That is correct? true. 
So think very carefully if you're licensing your own work, take some time to think about the implications of that license. Um, I, I always tell faculty, remember, if you license something under CCBY, yes, that is absolutely the most open it could possibly be. But you do open yourself up to people taking your work for commercial purposes as well. Um, so you really want to think about that. Um, all I can say is, yeah, you don't, you can't revoke it once you put it on the item. So think really long and hard about, about that license before you choose it. Yeah. All right, all right, any more questions? Doesn't look like they are, I don't see any hands raised, so. Um... I'm just gonna throw the, the presentation into the chat one more time. Like I said, my email is at the very end of it, so definitely feel free to send me an email if you have a question about the certification program or anything, let me know. <laughs> Oh, just a curiosity, uh, what does the certification program cost, Daniel? When I took it, it was still in beta. Okay. So it was $300. Okay. I believe it is now up to $500. Still a good deal. I, yeah, it's, uh, you know what? It was an amazing experience. I feel completely confident in deciphering and helping my colleagues pick open licenses after that program. It really helped me think really deeply about the licensing and also the implication of licensing materials down the line, I would highly recommend it. So like I said, if you wanna get in touch about that, please please send me an email. I'll be happy to share my experience um, about that. Great. Well, thank you very much, Danielle. And um, if anybody wants the recording, that recording will be posted in our workplace group, our faculty development community of practice workplace group. So if you want the recording, you have to go there. Uh, and that's an openly, you know, uh, open membership group. So anybody can join it. Um, and the registration link for the next webinar, if you want to attend that on December 5th at noon on uh, best practices for consulting with faculty is there. And again, thank you, Danielle. And uh, everyone have a good rest of your day. Yep. Thanks so much. Take care, guys. Bye.